Today let's explore the Environment Protection Act step by step. First what exactly is EPA and why do we need it? Next let's understand its purpose. Moving on to its rules, what are the specific regulations under the EPA? And next let's see the impact of these rules. Next what happens if someone violates these rules? Finally we will discuss the challenges and criticisms the EPA faces. Let's get started. First what is Environment Protection Act? The Environment Protection Act is often referred to as EPA. It stands as a cornerstone in India's environmental legislation. It addresses environmental concerns and protect natural resources in India. Its primary goal is to safeguard our natural resources and ensure a balanced ecosystem for all organisms. This act was enacted by Parliament of India in May 1986 and came into force on 19 November 1986. It has 26 sections and 4 chapters. This act was largely a response to Bhopal gas leak disaster. This act was passed by Indian government under Article 253 of the Constitution, which allows the central government to make laws to fulfill international agreements signed by India. EPA creates two important bodies, which are Central Pollution Control Board and State Pollution Control Boards. The CPCB handles environmental regulation nationally, while SPCBs manage them at state level. Both boards monitor pollution, grant permits for industries, and enforce rules by penalizing offenders. This act is like a big umbrella for environmental rules in India. It covers everything from big industries to coastal areas and places sensitive to the environment. This act has 4 chapters and 26 sections. Chapter 1 covers the introductory information like Act's title, extent, commencement date and definitions. Chapter 2 outlines the general powers of central government. Chapter 3 empowers the central government to take actions to protect the environment. Chapter 4 allows the government to appoint officers to enforce these objectives, including the power to direct the closure, prohibition, or regulation of industry and pollution. EPA serves as a comprehensive framework for addressing various environmental challenges in India. And these challenges include air pollution, water pollution, deforestation and land degradation, loss of biodiversity, and other environmental challenges. Air pollution is a big problem caused by factories and cities growing. It hurts people and the environment. To deal with this, there is a law called Environment Protection Act. This law sets standards for emissions aiming to limit harmful pollutants released into the air. Water pollution happens when harmful substances get into the water sources like rivers or lakes and make the water unsafe. This is a big problem because it affects water quality. To tackle this, there is a law called the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. This law says you can't put harmful stuff into water. The Central Pollution Control Board and State Pollution Control Boards make sure people follow these rules. Deforestation and land degradation. Cutting down trees and ruining land harms nature and biodiversity. To stop this, there is a law called Forest Conservation Act 1980. This law decides how forests are used and encourages planting new trees and growing forests again to protect nature. Loss of biodiversity. Many animals and plants are in danger because their homes are disappearing and people are trading them illegally. To safeguard them, there is a law called Wildlife Protection Act 1972. This law shields endangered species and set up safe zones to conserve them. EPA deals with various environmental problems like soil and noise pollution as well as managing hazardous waste. Another law, the Biological Diversity Act 2002, helps to regulate the use of biological resources responsibly. Now let's understand the purpose of EPA. This act follows UN decisions, that is it does what UN says about the environment. This act keeps environment safe. Next, it prevents things that could harm people, animals, plants or our stuff. And these are the elements of EPA work together to achieve its purpose of protecting and improving the environment, preventing hazards and implementing international environmental agreements. First, broad scope. EPA acts as a comprehensive framework or umbrella law for environmental protection. It covers a wide range of environmental issues ranging from air and water pollution to land pollution. Next, central government powers. This act grants extensive powers to central government. EPA grants authority to central government to protect and improve environment, setting standards, regulating industries, and coordinating state actions. Environmental standards and monitoring. EPA makes rules for how clean the environment should be and how much pollution is allowed. It establishes safety rules for hazardous substances. It watches closely to make sure people follow the rules and keep the environment clean. Next, Environmental Impact Assessment. The EPA requires assessment to be conducted before certain projects are undertaken to evaluate their potential environmental impacts. Prohibition and Regulation This law gives the government a power to stop or control industries or processes that are harmful to environment. Public Participation 
the main law doesn't mention public involvement but other rules that come later like those about environment impact assessment allow the public to share their opinions and to be part of decisions penalties and enforcement this law sets out penalty for violation of environmental regulations and provides mechanisms for their enforcement hazardous substance management EPA addresses the management and regulation of hazardous substances to minimize their impact on environment and public health. Now what are the rules under EPA? Environment Protection Rules 1986, Environment Impact Assessment Notification 2006, Coastal Regulation Zone Notification, Biomedical Waste Management Rules 2016, Plastic Waste Management Rules 2016. Environment Protection Rules 1986 These rules were formulated under Environmental Protection Act 1986 and provide the framework for conservation of the environment, prevention and control of pollution. These rules covers various aspects such as air pollution, water pollution, hazardous waste management, etc. EIA notification 2006. This notification makes it necessary for certain types of projects to get environmental clearance before they can start. This means they have to prove they won't harm the environment. The notification outlines how the process should happen. including getting input from the public and having expert committees review the projects the coastal regulation zone crz notification in india controls what can be done along the coast to keep environment safe and prevent erosion it sets rules for construction industry and other projects in these areas to make sure they won't harm the coastal environment biomedical waste management rule 2016 it gives instruction on how to handle and get rid of medical waste safely They aim to prevent the spread of infections and protect public health and environment from the harmful effects of biomedical waste. Plastic Waste Management Rules 2016. This rule control and handle plastic waste better to protect the environment. They tell us how to collect, separate, recycle and throw away plastic waste safely. These rules also encourage using other materials instead of plastic to lessen its usage. Now let's understand the importance of Environment Protection Act. The Environment Protection Act is really important because it does three main things. First, strengthening environmental governance. There is stronger environmental rules. This act establishes a strong legal framework for environmental regulation, making governance and enforcement more effective. Second, raising environmental standards. There is better quality environment. By setting and enforcing standards, the act enhances the quality of air, water and soil. This improvement benefits public health and promotes environmental sustainability. And finally, promoting sustainable development. That is balancing development and environment. Through measures like environment impact assessment and regulating industrial activities, the act encourages sustainable development practices which balance economic growth with environmental protection. What happens if someone violates this act? Individuals who violate EPA in India can face jail up to 5 years, and if the violation persists for more than 1 year, it can extend to 7 years also a maximum penalty of 1 lakh rupees with an additional 5000 rupees for each day the violation continues for companies responsible individuals like directors can face punishment for violations they can avoid punishment by proving they made genuine efforts to prevent the violation for government departments head of departments can be punished but they can avoid punishment if they prove they did their best to prevent it Additional actions by authorities under this act includes shutting down or regulating polluting industries, stopping or limiting the supply of electricity or water to violators, and regulating or stopping the supply of electricity or water to the violating industry. Now let's discuss the challenges and criticisms the EPA faces. These criticisms highlight challenges such as ineffective implementation, inadequate public involvement, and the difficulty in balancing economic development with environmental conservation under EPA of 1986. First implementation challenges limited funding and resources make it hard for regulators to enforce environmental laws properly not having enough staff can lead to gaps in enforcing the law and delays in responding to violations without the right equipment and technology it is even harder for the regulators to enforce the law effectively corruption within regulatory agencies or collusion within industry can weaken efforts to enforce regulations next public participation Some people question if it is good to let everyone to be part of environmental decision and people do not have enough info to join in. Also there aren't many opportunities for people to join in and make a difference. And next, balancing development and conservation. Finding the right balance between growing the economy and protecting the environment is tricky. And growing the economy can harm the environment. We need smart plans for development that don't hurt the environment too much. And that's all for this session. Thank you so much.